In this video, we're going to discuss factoring quadratic expressions, particularly whose lead coefficients, or a values, are not going to be 1. So if you caught the last video, we did the quadratic expressions where the a value is 1. We were talking about this leading coefficient here, this a value was 1, and we had this quadratic term, then we had our linear term, and our constant. So the quadratic term, again, is just considered quadratic because its degree is 2, or the, the exponent on this guy is 2. So since the 2 is the largest exponent, or we call it of degree 2, then we classify that as quadratic. So when we look at this first example, we're going to see that we have 3x squared plus 11x plus 10. We can't quite do the same thing that we did last time because there's this 3 out here. So we can't just drop down an x and another x because x times x does not make 3x. So we're going to do something, uh, we're going to use a method called the AC method, which means we're going to take this 3, which is, if you recall from up here, our A value, and we're going to take this 10, which is our constant, which is the C value, that's where it gets the name AC method, and we're going to multiply the A value and the C value together, so 3 times 10 is going to be 30. Okay, now that we know it's 30, I want factors of 30, that still make this linear term, still make 11. So if I have 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6, and those are all the factors of 30, we want to know which one of those will multiply to make a positive 30, but add to make a positive 11. So we know that 5 and 6 is going to work. We can't just put 5 and 6 into our parentheses and call it good, like we did last time. We have to do one additional step. What we're going to do is take this 11x and break him down into two separate like terms that add to make 11x. Well, we're going to use this 5 and 6, so we're going to have 5x plus 6x. It's very important to make sure you keep these variables with them. They have to be like terms because 5x plus 6x equals this 11x. And then what's going to happen is that this, the quadratic term and the constant are just going to come along for the ride. So we have 3x squared that we added to the front and 10 that we added to the back. So the only thing that's really changed from this expression to this expression is we took that middle term, that 11x, and we broke them down into the sum of two terms, 5x and 6x. And again, the reason that we chose 5 and 6 is because they added to this 11, but they multiplied to make 30, which we got from the 3 times 10. Okay, well what are we going to do now at this point? Okay, at this point, we're going to use something that we discussed in, an, in a previous video. We're going to do factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms together and take out the common factors of each independently. So 3x squared plus 5x looks like an x they have in common. So what's left over is 3x plus 5. Likewise, what's the greatest common factor of 6x and 10? Looks like a positive 2. So that's going to be 3x plus 5. And as we saw with factor by grouping, as long as these two expressions that are left inside are the same, we can put them together and say 3x plus 5 as one group, and then the greatest common factors, or what we pulled out, the x and the plus 2, is going to be the other one. So this is this quadratic expression factored into two binomials, 3x plus 5 and x plus 2. Okay, so the next example that we're going to look at is 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. Now it's going to be the same idea we did last time. Notice that this thing is not a 1, it's going to be a 6, so we know the a value is not 1, so we can't use the old method, we have to do something else. We have to use the ac method. So I'm going to take this 6, I'm going to multiply it by the negative 5, and 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. So I want to know all the factors of 30, like we did last time. 130, 215, 310, 5 and 6. But in this case, they're going to multiply to make negative 30 and add to make this positive 7. So since we know they multiply to make a negative 30, one of them is going to be positive, one of them is going to be negative. But when they are opposite signs, they have to be 7. So we know it's going to work out right there that it's going to be a 3 and a 10, and it'll be a negative 3 and a positive 10. So what does that look like? Well, if we know it makes a positive 7, it's got to be a negative 3x and a positive 10x. And again, make sure you keep the x's in here. Keep that to be like terms. And then the quadratic term and the constant 
both just come along for the ride. Okay, I'm going to draw a line here to kind of divide that stuff. So now it's factor by grouping time. We have this guy and we have this guy. So what's the greatest common factor here? It looks like 3x. And what do we have left over? Looks like 2x minus 1. Okay, and be sure, because a lot of students struggle right here, that if they pull out a 3x, then sometimes they just leave this 1 out. Well, you've got to be careful and not do that. That negative 1 has to come, because if you're going to redistribute that back in, if this 1 wasn't there, then you would completely miss this term. So make sure that you don't miss that term. Okay, so what's the common factor here? It looks like a 5, so I'm going to say plus 5. And then what's left over is uh, another 2x minus 1, which that's really nice because these are the same now. So I can group them up and get 2x minus 1, and then 3x plus 5. So the 3x and plus 5 were the greatest common factors that I pulled out of each one of our sets, and that will go to be the other binomial. So it's 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 5, and those are the two quantities that are the factors of our 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. Okay, so our next example is going to be 12p squared minus 11p plus 2. Again, same thing, we do not have a 1 here, there's actually a value here, and it won't factor out of everything, so it stays there, so 12 times 2, it's a positive 12 times a positive 2, is going to make 24. So the factors of 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Okay, so I've got some things to choose from. I know that when I multiplied them, it was a positive 24. So I know that these have to have the same sign. Either they're both negative or they're both positive. So when I multiply them, it makes a positive 24. Okay, well in this case, I want them to add up to negative 11. So I know they both have to be negative. Okay, so if they're both negative, what will work here? Well, it looks like 3 and 8, because negative 3 and a negative 8 would make a negative 11, and then 3 times 8 does make our 24. Okay, so whenever I break that down, I'm going to have a negative 3p and a negative 8p, and again, make sure you keep the p values in there, or your p's in there, because that's going to be their variables, and they have to be like terms. So, and like usual, uh, our quadratic term comes along for the ride, and so does our constant of plus 2. So at this time, I'm going to group them together. And what's the greatest common factor here? It looks like 3p. And what's left over after I take a 3p out? It looks like maybe 4p minus 1. And there's that minus 1 again. Make sure 3p was here and we took out 3p, so make sure we get the 1 right there. Okay, in this one we have a negative 8p plus 2. Uh-oh, this is interesting. I see something. That this was a positive and a negative. And this one's a negative and a positive. So their signs are completely backwards. So I'm going to need to factor out a negative. And when I factor out that negative, this term is going to end up being positive, And this one will end up being negative, which will then have the same terms here. Okay, so I'll take a 2 out because that's the greatest common factor. And it'll end up being a 4p minus 1. So let's look carefully at this. If I were to distribute this back through with this negative, it would be negative 2 times 4p is negative 8p, and the negative 2 times a negative 1, well, the negatives cancel and make a plus 2. So that's why this works out, that we factored a negative out of here. Okay, same thing. I notice that those are both 4p minus 1, so I'll put that in, and then 3p minus 2 uh, were the greatest common factors. So I pull those out and group them together, so I have 4p minus 1, and 3p minus 2, and those will be the two binomials that multiply to make my 12p squared minus 11p plus 2. Okay, let's do one final example. It'll be 4y squared minus 4y minus 15. Okay, same thing as what we've been doing. This 4 is out here. It won't factor out of everything, and it's not a 1, so I have to use the AC method. So 4 times negative 15 is going to be negative 60. So I want to know all the factors of negative 60. Well, I got 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, and 6 and 10. And that looks like all of them for 60. Okay, well, I know that if they're going to multiply to make negative 60, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. 
And if they add to make negative 4, I know the larger of them has to be negative. So what values here are we going to use to make our 4? Well, it looks like 6 and 10. And it looks like our 6 will be positive and our 10 will be negative. So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to say 6y is the positive one, so plus 6y. And then minus 10y, that's the negative. And like we've been doing, the quadratic term and the constant come along for the ride. So I'm going to group the first two and the last two together. So what's the greatest common factor? It looks like 2y. So when I take that out, it looks like I have 2y plus 3 left over. And what's the greatest common factor of the second two? Looks like they're both negative, and both of these were both positive, so I'm going to factor a negative out, factor a negative 5 out, and I'm going to get 2y plus 3. So we have our 2y plus 3's that are the same, 2y plus 3. And then our other one is 2y minus 5. So right there is the final answer for this one. Okay, so at this point, a lot of students kind of catch on and they're like, well, wait a second, I switched those linear terms around. I said negative 10y and then plus 6. Well, what does that look like if I turn them around? So I'm going to scoot it over and we're going to kind of rework this problem a second way. So I have my 4y squared minus 4y minus 15. But instead of putting the positive 6y and the negative 10y, I'm going to put the negative 10y first and then the positive 6y. And you'll notice that's just going to be backwards what we did over here. We did plus 6 and then minus 10. So this time we're going to do minus 10 and plus 6. Well, same thing. The quadratic term comes along for the ride and the constant comes along for the ride. So when I group these things, uh, 2 is going to be my greatest common factor. 2y in this case. So when I pull that out, I'm going to have a 2y minus 5 left. And over here, it looks like 3 is my greatest common factor, so 2y minus 5. These are both 2y minus 5, so that's one group. And the other one is the 2y plus 3. That was the greatest common factor. And what do you notice about those two answers? Well, if I go back over here, in this case, the 2y plus 3 was, what, what was the same thing. And here, it was the 2y minus 5 that was the same thing. But the 2y plus 3 was our greatest common factors. So we get the same answer, 2y minus 5 and 2y plus 3, just like over here, except we have them in different orders. So in this case, the 2y and the minus 5 were the greatest common factors, and the 2y plus 3 was what was left over, and those were the same. So it does not matter what order you put these linear terms in, as long as you do the procedure correctly, you'll get the same answer every time.